please just remember to keep sp spread out as you can. And it's it's crazy. I always do my uh, Sunday, what I call my Sunday prep on Saturday, and I told Bonnie and Robin yesterday, I was like, um, I forget how to do Sunday prep. Because <laughs> we haven't, you know, I was like, what do I do? I forget what I, I, forget what I do. So, but it's very good to see everybody, and I'm so glad you're here, and I'm glad we can be back together. So, um, let's start with a silent prayer, and then a time of prayer, and then we'll We'll move into our worship service. Lord Jesus, we are grateful to be back together here in the sanctuary. It Kind of feels like we've just picked up right where we left off, and that's a good thing, I think. Uh, we all kind of look a little different with our masks and things, but uh, we're just thankful that we're back together. And pray your blessing upon this service and upon our church that we would live our lives pleasing to you by the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray that this worship service will bring you honor and glory, that as we come together and a bit of a different manner that we can still worship you and love you and adore you and sing our praise to you even though we really can't sing. Uh, we'll enjoy the music and the words to the songs and we're just grateful for this time together. Thank you for each person here. We also pray for those who are unable to be here. We know that many wouldn't feel comfortable coming with the pandemic ongoing and we pray your blessings upon them we're so thankful for peggy recording the services and recording the sermons over the last several weeks so that folks at home could could still worship and we could still uh, get your word out and we we just ask now that you would quiet our hearts and calm our spirits that indeed we might worship you in spirit and in truth and we pray in Jesus' name, amen. So you, I don't know if it's still up there, the, all, the, all the rules. Um, just, just be mindful to uh, wash your hands and if you could clean your space before you leave. And um, uh, I don't know, I, can't, I don't have that list in front of me. I did not memorize it. So, um, but anyway, just be mindful. Be mindful of one another. I know some of you want to hug, and um, <laughs> um, I would like to too, but I would have to do air hugs. And so, um, anyway, it's going to be a little different. And you don't have any bulletins, which might kind of feel like you're naked, maybe, because you don't have any bulletin. But uh, we're going to follow pretty much the same, the same order. The biggest difference, uh, there. Well, actually, Paul is going to play a special music here in a little bit. Right. And um, during the hymns, we can't sing, but we can hum. But uh, like Bart Beam said, just read the words. I mean, because the words are pretty powerful in these songs. And then at the end, we'll have the offering. Uh, the, the offering plates are back on the back table. So if you just drop your offering in there, of course, didn't want to pass the plates because of the germs and all that. So um, I think that's about everything. We won't have any choir, or bell choir, or children's moments. Um, oh yes, there is a table back in the back with some bookmarks and pens and different things on it if you're interested. I've been cleaning out the house and um, accumulated a lot of things over 15 years. So would like any of those things, feel free. Mm -hmm. Pardon me? 15 years ago. Oh yeah, there were stuff, yeah, yeah, there was stuff in the, in the parsonage from before I moved here. So, um, anyway, that is, is anybody, uh, Brenda? There's also a basket of crocheting crosses back there that I intended to use on Easter Sunday, which didn't happen here. Take as many as you like. There's about 90 of them in that basket. 
Great, thank you. There are crocheted bookmarks in the basket back there that Brenda made, so feel free to take as many as you want. Any other announcements we need to be made aware of? Okay, at uh, this time, I'm going to ask Chuck to come forward. He has an announcement to make, and, and I have another announcement, and then we'll move into our worship time. And we'll see if I can get up here away from everybody. I'll be okay. Uh, pastor Jewel will be our new pastor. He'll be here uh, the 5th of July. He comes from Cold Grove up north. Uh, well, I um, these last several weeks, as you know, uh, with, with, since we've not been in the building, uh, many, if not all, of you have enjoyed the service. Hopefully, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, my messages over the last several weeks and. That would not have happened without Peggy Dunn. Mm -hmm. With her expertise and her, uh, I mean, I, all I did was preach into a camera. She got it all together, she got it online, and I don't know how many hours a week she put into that. But um, it's much appreciated, and so Peggy, I have a little something here for you that I'm, I'm gonna put my mask on and bring it down to you, okay? Real loud, clap. Yes, clap. Okay, let's see, I think that's all, I think that's all I had as far as um, any announcements. So we'll move on to our opening hymn, and you're welcome to stand if you would like, we just can't sing. So um, the words will be up on the screen, you can hum if you want. Uh, but our opening hymn is Great is Thy Faithfulness. And I guess it doesn't matter what, what, what number it is because we can't use the hymn notes. It's 140. <laughs> it's 140 if you have that memorized. So anyway, the words will be up on the screen. And um, just, I, I know it's kind of awkward not singing and stuff, but just meditate on those words. They're, they're very powerful. So if you like to stand, you're, you're welcome to stand. And will listen to Great Is Thy Faithfulness.
And I would like, uh, if you guys don't mind, all the fathers uh, in our congregation to please stand. And we can recognize you. We can clap. Thank you all. Um, it's kind of, oh, as we've said, it's a weird time. And of course, like Brenda said, we weren't together on Easter. We weren't together on Mother's Day. But we're together on Father's Day, so um, we're grateful for that. We're just grateful for, we're back together. And thank you to all you men who are being a godly example to your families and your community and your church. I really appreciate that. This time, I would like for us to join in a time of prayer just to um, prevent any yelling or anything, or not that we yell, but um, vocalizing. Um, I'm just going to have a pastoral prayer rather than sharing joys and concerns. But at this time, maybe if you have a joy, could you raise your hand? Don't You don't have to say what it is, just if you have a joy, raise your hand joy about something. Okay, thank God for that. And do you have, anyone have a concern? Concerns, just raise your hand. Okay. All right, well, let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we come to you today with a mix of emotions. We, of course, are grateful for the fathers in our midst. We're thankful for their example and their wisdom. We pray your blessing upon them, that you would help them each and every day to seek your will, to seek your face, to be in communion with you, to know your love, and to spread that love to their wives and their children and their community and their friends. We celebrate this day and we celebrate them. We also pray for those whose fathers have passed on. We know this can be a difficult day for them and ask for your comfort and the blessing of memory. Lord, we also pray for everyone else who comes to this Father's Day with, again, a, a lot of emotion for different reasons. For those who find this to be a happy day, we pray that they would be able to celebrate in safe ways. For those who find this to be a difficult day, we pray for your comfort and your grace. Lord, we also have the emotion of the COVID-19 pandemic. We come to this place wearing masks and bringing cleaner and wipes and all kinds of stuff that a few months ago we, we wouldn't have thought that that would ever happen. And so we pray that in the midst of this virus that you would calm our hearts Help us to take moments away from the news and all the information. I know sometimes it's good to be informed and we definitely want to be informed, but there are times when we just need to take a break, take some deep breaths, do something we enjoy so we don't get overwhelmed by all of the anxiety and all of the concern. We do pray your blessing upon all of the frontline workers in whatever capacity that is. It could be a, a doctor or doctors or nurses. It could be pharmacists, technicians, postal employees, delivery employees, grocery store workers. Lord, the list goes on. You, you know all those people who, while many have been asked to stay home, those folks have been asked to continue to work and we pray your, your blessing on them and your protection for them. Lord, we also come to you this day with deep emotion 
about the racial unrest in our country. And we pray, Lord, for those who have been victims. We pray for reform to take place. We pray for those who have perpetrated indiscretions, those who have openly shown prejudice and discrimination. And Lord, we pray also for those who may think that, that they're not prejudiced, that, that they don't discriminate. Help all of us to take inventory in our own hearts and minds, that we might be honest with ourselves and see how we might treat others differently. There may be there may be different issues, different reasons, different situations, but each one of us, Lord, is, is a person made in your image. And so we pray that you would grant us the grace to treat others as you have treated us. And then, Lord, we also come to this service with the emotion of a pastoral change. It's hard for me to think that this is the last time I will stand in this pulpit. I look at this pulpit and the left side and the right side have stains from where pastors over the years have placed their hands. I add my handprint to this pulpit. Now nobody come up here and touch it because and now it's got germs on it. <laughs> but Lord, this is a sacred place and I have felt your presence in this place to a depth that only you could understand. There have been times, Lord, when I have been weak and thought, I can't get through this this morning. And I have uttered a prayer to you. And I have felt your Holy Spirit fill me to the brim. I pray for forgiveness for the times when I got in this pulpit and thought, I got this, Lord. And those were probably the worst sermons I ever gave. So help us today as we reflect and remember these last 15 and a half years. We also pray your blessing upon Jason at Waynesville. This is his last Sunday there. We pray for that congregation as they say goodbye to him and prepare for my coming. We pray for each person here as, at least in a pastoral capacity, they say goodbye to me. And as they prepare for Reverend Jeff Jewell to come, we pray your blessings upon him. Help him, as I believe this is his last Sunday in the pulpit at his current church. And we pray for that congregation, who also is in the middle of saying goodbye to their pastor and in the midst of welcoming a new one. Emotions are riding pretty high, and there's just a lot going on in our lives. But one thing that never changes is you, Lord, and your faithfulness. So help us to cling to that. Help us to give great thanks for these past 15 years, and also give great thanks in advance for how you're going to bless this congregation in the next 15 years and the 15 years after that, and the 15 years after that. We are grateful, grateful for the partnership that the district has offered. And we ask, Lord, that you would help all of us, wherever we find ourselves, to, by your grace, be faithful in our service to you and in our love for you. Lord, you also are worthy of praise and glory and you know the hands that raised 
a few moments ago when I asked if anyone had a joy or a praise. And so we thank you for those, each one, you know what each one is, and we are grateful. And then I asked for those who have a concern to raise their hands. You also know each one of those concerns. You know them better than we know them. And so we pray that you would meet each person at the point of their need, whether it's health, finances, anxiety, worry over these current circumstances, whether it's relational concerns, spiritual concerns, whatever it is, Lord, we know that you know what those are. And we pray that you would tend to them in your never-ending loving kindness. We are grateful for this church, Sabine and United Methodist. We are privileged to call it part of our lives. And Lord, we pray your blessing upon each one of us. And we ask that you would help us to be a blessing to you. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Now again, just uh, for cautionary purposes, I'm going to lead us in the Lord's Prayer, and I just invite you to, oh. No, wait a minute. No, I'm not. <laughs> Jenny, the bell choir and I got together and, and got your gift. And I know the rest of you probably feel very similar to how I felt. I think grieving, losing her. When Jenny walked into through these doors, she completed our family. She completed our church family. And so it's been a difficult time. And we don't really want to lose you. I don't know that any of the rest of you know this, but except for the bell choir. But Joni has come every Wednesday and listened to our joys and concerns and prayed with us, and she always remembered every single joy and concern. She never forgot. <laughs> so, as hard as it's going to be, no other pastor did that with us. And uh, they brought, we were a close group already, but this brought us even closer. I thank you. I would like for you to open this now, please. It's taped. <laughs> I have no weapons up here. <laughs> Sorry. I'll, I'll tell you guys what it is. She needs to plug her ears. They're wind chimes, and they're tuned to Amazing Grace. Aww. So whenever you hear them tinkling in your yard, you will think of the thingalings. <laughs> You're in need of grace. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I will open them once I get a knife. And, uh, yes. Um, thank you. It's it's a joy to to have been with the Bell Choir and all of you guys to to join in your your joys and your sorrows and. Um, 
it's been a privilege. So thank you very much. Okay. Well, let's. Um, let's. Uh, I will, I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer and uh, pray it, and then and you guys can just listen to me. Okay. So let's join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to share with you the scripture reading this morning. It is in your, oh no, it, it is in your bulletin, but you don't have one. <laughs> oh, heaven's a hard break. Well, here is the scripture reading. It's up here, though, I believe. It should be up here. Okay, this is from Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 through 15. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered, and make sure that Joshua hears it, because I will completely blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. And Lord, we also pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would help us to hear your word proclaimed this day and help us to live it out in our lives every day. So as, as we've already mentioned, we're, we're going through a season of change, a, a season of different kind of battles. Sometimes those battles are literally on the battlefield. Other times they take place in our culture, in society at large, at home, at work. They may be about our own health, global health, those battles can be mental or physical. And they can be long-term or short-term. The story in Exodus 17 reminds us that we should not face our battles alone. In this story, we see that Moses, Moses was key to the Israelites' victory against the Amalekites. But he was not alone. Joshua and his men were on the battlefield, the front lines. But Moses and Aaron and Hur served as overseers of a sort. On top of the hill, as long as Moses' hands were up, the Israelites were winning. Now, I don't know how long this battle took, but it took long enough for Moses' hands to get tired of him getting tired of holding his hands up now. I don't know how long the average person could hold up their hands. We could try it. You want to try it? <laughs> but after a while, even the, the strongest and most physically fit among us, their hands would get tired. And so Moses needed help keeping his hands up. Aaron was on one side, Hur was on the other, and they would hold his hands up. 
and the Israelites were victorious. There are a few ways these days that we need each other's help in keeping our hands up and keeping going and dealing with everything that's going on in this life. And so I want to talk about some faithful steps, the next faithful step that we can take. First of all, the next faithful step is in helping each other during this COVID-19 and the racial justice battles. The world is a very scary place right now. We need each other as we face the physical and mental toll that all of this takes on us. One of the pandemics seeks to take away our health and, of course, threatens lives. The other takes away people's rights and also threatens to take away people's lives. Some days, maybe you're having a good day and a friend of yours is having a difficult day. On that day, you help your friend. But then maybe there's a day when you're struggling and a friend is having a good day. That's when your friend helps you. We cannot go these roads alone. We also need to be faithful in helping each other during this pastoral change. Fifteen and a half years is a long time. I've been your pastor since January of 2005. Think of how the world has changed, not just in these last few months, but in those last fifteen and a half years. I got my first cell phone, Jenna, here while I was at Sabina United Methodist Church. I also, Jenna, was introduced to the DVR. Hallelujah. <laughs> I had a cassette player in my 1997 Saturn when I came here. And text messaging wasn't anything I could wrap my head around. And so after such a long period of time, it's understandable that we would grieve. It's only natural to be sad when you say goodbye. But let's remember, it's not goodbye forever. There will be a change in our relationship, but it is not goodbye forever. I can be your friend forever. But as of July 1st, I will no longer be your pastor. That affects you. And that affects me. Our emotions are not like light switches that we can turn on and off. Yet we find ourselves facing a time of transition. I've shed many tears over these last few weeks. And from what you all tell me, you have too. Well, you're certainly, of course, welcome to contact me during this time. I strongly encourage you to help each other as you try to manage these strong feelings of grief and sadness. Help hold each other up. Think back to Aaron and her. They were on either side of Moses during that battle with the Amalekites. Like Moses did, surround yourself with supportive and encouraging people. I have every reason to believe you're already doing this. But I wanted to highlight that from Exodus chapter 17. Those three men and how they helped one another during that battle. Another faithful step I would encourage you to take is to help your new pastor. Remember that Pastor Jeff is also going through a transition. He is in the middle of a move. He is saying goodbye to people he is currently serving and will be beginning to learn your names, getting to know you, and contemplating his faithful steps as the leader of Sabina United Methodist Church. I don't know Jeff well, but I'm sure, like all pastors, 
He has his own style of relating to people and his own un unique approach to ministry. Welcome him. Get to know him. Support him and appreciate him as your pastor. Inevitably, there will be times when he will be like Aaron and her, and you'll be like Moses in need of some help, and Jeff will help you. There will also undoubtedly be some times when maybe you're like Aaron and her, and Jeff will be in Moses' seat in need of some help. Help him. It might be something as simple as where to get the best sugar cookies in town, Yule's Market. <laughs> or it might be helping him learn family groups, who is related to who. Now let's not start with the fair family, okay? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go a little small. And then work into the fairs and the brings. It might be giving him some ad council information or introducing him to other leaders in the community. But take interest. Be proactive. Offer to help hold him up as he gets acquainted with all things Sabina United Methodist Church and all things Sabina. If he does something you appreciate, tell him. If he does something you disagree with, or it's not something done the way you've always done it, give him the benefit of the doubt. Be generous with grace and mercy. Be open to new ideas. My next faithful step is moving to Waynesville. Just like Jeff and, and you all here, Waynesville folks and I will be going through that getting to know you phase. I pray we will be faithful to follow the example of Moses and Aaron and her too. Provide help as needed. Request and receive help as needed. Like I said earlier, we can't go it alone. We need each other. If we realize that, accept that and live that we'll be taking our next faithful steps and all the while god continues to be faithful god continues to be worthy of our trust our devotion our love and our service i don't know how many of you i'm going to kind of change gears now I don't know how many of you watched the uh, the show, what is it, To Tell the Truth, that game show? Any of you watch that, To Tell the Truth? And so, you know, every now and then, so they have the three contestants come out, and the, the celebrities try to figure out who really is the person they claim to be. Well, sometimes then they'll have one contestant will have been whoever it was, they leave, and then there's two left, and that, then they have a segment called, Before You Go. So, before I go, I'm not saying goodbye, I'm just saying see you later. But before I go, I just, I, I kind of want to go down memory lane. I remember the time that Bill Howard and Arnold Apple, the, well, the, the doorbell at the parsonage wasn't working. And I forget which one of them I called, but they both came over to, to the parsonage and they were trying to find the hardwired doorbell. They looked in the attic, or no, I think they finally found it in the attic. They looked all over, they looked in the garage, they couldn't find it. They thought, well, where's the crawl space? How do you get into the crawl space? Well, in case uh, Pastor Jeff needs to know this, you get in the crawl space at the parsonage by the, the door, the, the stairs, that are just outside the, the, the door that goes from the kitchen to the garage. There are stairs that go down into the garage. Those stairs move, and there's a hole. And that's how you get in the crawl space. Well, so Bill and Arnold were looking all around. They were like, yeah, I have an idea. Where is, where is this thing? And I, like I said, I think they finally found it in the, in the attic. But eventually, they just got one of those 
doorbells that you just like use with the battery. So, but anyway, that day I was in the kitchen and you know I told him I said let me know if you need anything. So I I stepped out of the out of the kitchen into the garage, going to ask them if I could you know if they needed some water if they needed anything. I step step out of that door and I look down. And there's Arnold Apple's head. <laughs> and he looked up and he's like, whatever you do, don't step down. <laughs> so, <laughs> I will never forget that. That was, oh, that was so funny. Then there was another time we had had a cookout over at Clinton East Apartments. It was an outreach. We're trying to build relationships with folks over there. And I forget what car I had. It might have been, was it the Saturn? Yeah. It was the Saturn that had the cassette player in it. And it, my car wouldn't start after her. And I don't know why we assumed something super serious was wrong, but we cleaned everything up, we got everything back to the church, and then, well, you guys know where Clinton's Departments is, probably know where the parsonage is. I got in my car, put it in drive, and Bonnie and Rick Fair pushed me in my car back to the parsonage. <laughs> now here's the kicker. It was just the battery. <laughs> yep. I don't know why we thought it was something more. I remember singing in Sunday school class. Phil loved it. Phil loved it when well, Rick and Bonnie and me and Lana chimed in sometimes. Uh, we sing in Sunday school class. I rem remember Easter breakfasts and the Bible trivia. Oh, yeah. Yeah, some of you guys are pretty good at Bible trivia. <laughs> I remember Bill and Mary Kay at Robbie and Jenna's wedding reception. I don't know if you guys remember this, but at the reception, the DJ asked, I guess, all the couples to come up. And then I, mean, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know this was what was going to happen, but the DJ then said he was going to see who had been married the longest. So, like, if you've been married five years, you get off the dance floor. If you've been married ten, get off the dance floor. At some point during all that, you know, Bill and Mary Kay had been married for like 500 years. <laughs> and Mary Kay looked at Bill and said, we're going to have to pace ourselves. We're going to be up here. <laughs> Then I remember the, the ham dinners and the chicken noodle dinners, and I can't remember which one it was. It was just a few years ago. And the, the door downstairs in what we call the blue room goes into the kitchen. Too many times someone was coming from the kitchen going into the blue room, and someone else was going out of the blue room into the kitchen. And somehow, all of a sudden, and Barb Beam's not here, but she'll hopefully hear this tomorrow. Um, at some point, she and I were coming together, and we saw each other, and, and we were like, whoopsie. And so then, of course, the rest of the dinner, anytime someone got in somebody else's way, whoopsie, whoopsie. And then I thought we needed one of those hospital mirrors right there so we could see, you know, who's coming. Libby already mentioned the, the bell choir prayers. Um, spending time with you guys before your, your practices were, I mean, that was, we had some intense conversations, shed some tears, laughed some laughs. That was good. And of course, the Christmas Eve cantata. In case anyone doesn't know this, Barbara Jo is a genius. And full of grace in managing everybody's schedule. At the beginning of each bell season, there's the, the getting out of the calendars. And, okay, Barbara Jo says, tell me what days you can't be here. Tell me what days you can't be here. And then she just coordinates it all, and who's there is there, and that's who we work with. And we got the wonderful bell choir. And choir music. Bible studies. Those of you who are in my Bible studies, we had a lot of good conversations, a lot of laughs, again, a lot of serious talks, so especially this latest group, we really got into some pretty deep stuff, and unfortunately we had to stop that because of the pandemic, but um, I really enjoyed, enjoyed that. Um, I hope I'm not uh, talking out of school, but I always knew over these last, well, I found out. I don't remember exactly when I found out, but do not call Doggy and Carolyn at 2 o'clock because that's when they have their dark chocolate snack. 
<laughs> okay, so last fall I was on vacation, and on that Sunday, uh, you know, of course I was off, so I wasn't here. And I don't know, it was maybe noon, 12.30, and I get a, a text from Carl. I'm like, oh no, you know, I hope everything's okay. I click on it, and it's a picture of Bree sitting up here for children's moments for the first time. And so that made me happy that she came up and we have had some good conversations since then. I also remember the free throw shooting at Bill and Mary Kay's house when we were doing a fundraiser for Imagine No Malaria. I always keep to myself who, who won that. <laughs> we also, moving right along, had some, obviously, some births, baptisms, weddings, funerals. When uh, Travis and Michelle got married, fair. Um, I mean, you know, I know it's the usual thing that, you know, you all dressed up and everything, but they had one of my favorite receptions ever, jeans and pizza. Breakfast with Champions. We met a lot of neat kids. Got a lot of good volunteers to help. Cheryl's here today. I don't know if you guys know Cheryl Roberts is here from the school. And we just, that was a fabulous, that's a fabulous ministry and I pray it will continue. It's gone to New Vienna even and it just really blossomed and that's a lot. Uh, Cheryl gets a lot of credit for that because she's overseen that and helped us get that going. And then we started United to Grow. That was the after school program. Started just this last school year. Of course, it too was ended abruptly. But um, I, I think we were, we were making some headway, making a difference in those kids' lives. And Vacation Bible School. And we had a lot of fun with that. Come in on Monday all energetic and by Friday. <laughs> and then for the first several years, I was like, does everybody want to go out to eat after Friday's? In ending service, we can all go out to eat and have fun. And at the first few years, everybody's like, okay, yeah, let's do it. And then, oh, I don't know. And then the last year, I don't think we even did it because we were just exhausted. We'll just attribute that to us getting older. <laughs> my uh, basketball, or my, basketball, my back surgery, that was back in 2011. And you guys were so supportive through that. And just really appreciate your, your support through through that. That was not an easy thing. And your prayers and God's faithfulness, that's what got me through that. And uh, again, Mark Beam's not here, uh, but the the basketball stocking, Christmas stocking that you guys got me, that the bell car got me, I don't know, if, I don't know how many of you even remember that. But it had it was it was a stocking and, and the bat the material looked like basketballs. And then it had a button you could push, and now I forget what song it played. But I mentioned that, I think on a Sunday morning, just, I don't know, I don't know how I mentioned it, but then I think it was Wednesday night at Belfire practice, I had one here for me. So that was, that was nice. And we have laughed a lot. We've, we've just, we've got a lot of people with good senses of humor, jokes, and. I mean, our administrative council meetings, you know, we, ideally they would have only last an hour and a half or so, although we started spreading them out, so they did need to be a little bit longer, each one, but they lasted a little longer maybe than they could have business-wise, but I think we were building a team with the camaraderie and the jokes and the sharing, and that, I think that was a really good. And we've cried a lot. We've experienced some, several unexpected deaths that um, were hard on our church family. And then there were some that we we knew were pretty inevitable. And those two were hard. And we said goodbye to a lot of people in these last 15 and a half years. When I graduated from high school, my dad, as you might imagine, had horrendous handwriting. And so when I graduated from high school, he typed me up a note. And, well, one thing he said in it was, 
If it wasn't for me, he would have been a Boston Celtics fan. <laughs> but I like purple better than green, so I came with the Lakers. And anyway, in that he also said, like Bob Hope says, thanks for the memories. And like the Golden Girls say, thank you for being a friend. And I echo those same sentiments to you. It's been a privilege and an honor to be your pastor. You know, I was about 34 when I came here. And I guess responsibility-wise, I was an old 34. But in some ways, I was a very young 34. And I don't know if you know this or not, but I feel like I've come into my own, that I've grown up here. And, and you know, some people might think, oh my gosh, Joe, you weren't grown up at 34. But then I know some of you are maybe, well, I'm 70 and I'm not grown up yet. So, <laughs> thank you. But I really do. I feel like um, I've become more confident. There were years before I was here that I would never have attempted to partner with Cheryl in the school. I would have been too intimidated and, um, and just... And that's just a testament to God's grace. Um, I, I've always been responsible, but as I've told you many times, you're probably tired of hearing it, but with the inferior, inferiority complex I had growing up, I was pretty slow to grow maybe emotionally and just in, I'm now, you know, finding my footing. I found my footing these last 15 and a half years and, and your support and your encouragement and your affirmation and your love has helped in that. So I thank you. I'm a better pastor because of it. And I think God, I know God can use things that we might think, think from our past that may be weaknesses like my inferiority complex. We might think, oh my gosh, you know, I don't want to mention that. I don't want to deal with that. But God works through those things. And through the vulnerability and the openness. And just like with Moses, you know, he knew he needed Aaron and Herder's hands. To help to hold up his hands. And you guys over the years have held up my hands many, many times. And I thank you. I hope that I have held up your hands. When I've done that, where I've done that, I give God the thanks and praise for giving me the ability. Where I fail to do that, I pray for your forgiveness and grace. I love you all. I always will. Nothing will change that. I pray that you will remember with fondness our time together. And I pray that with grace and God's love and trusting in his, faith, in his faithfulness that you will move forward with Pastor Jeff. And I look forward to hearing the stories of Hey, we're doing this. Hey, we did that. Jeff led us to do this. We're, we're engaged in this. We're growing. We're, now we're rooting for you. I'll be your biggest cheer. I was a cheerleader long ago. I was a flag football cheerleader. I don't know if I ever told you that. I was the base of the pyramid. Okay? And we were... We, we wore, it was, the, it was the Chiefs flag football team, and we wore, we didn't wear skirts. No, we wore burgundy t-shirts and jeans. See, this was my cheerleading squad. 
So, if you've been around me, you know every now and then I'll break out in the cheer. My sister was a cheerleader all through high school, and she would practice, and I would hear the cheerleaders, and, and I can break out into cheers, you know, ready. And I told you about the, the time when I was supposed to say the prayer at my family's evening dinner one time, and my sister had been practicing for cheerleading tryouts. So, you know, every five minutes, ready, okay. Ready, okay. Ready, okay. And so we sit down for dinner, and it's my turn to say grace. So we bow our heads, and I say, ready, okay. Oh wait, this is a prayer. <laughs> so I have, I have cheerleading experience. I'll be your biggest cheerleader. So, thank you. Thanks for the memories. Thank you for being a friend. We are going to listen to Paul play Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you looked at me, I thought, okay, maybe I'm going to forget some. Or you could have hung along with this for yeah, a second. Okay. last 15 and a half years, way before that, and we praise you for how you're going to be with us continuously in the future. Pray your blessing upon each person here, all the members of this congregation, those who are unable to be here. We pray for safety, for mercy, for grace, for love, and kindness, and gentleness, and hope, and joy. We also pray your blessing upon the offering that is received this day. May it be a blessing to you, and may it grow your kingdom. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. 